By the way, please, if you have not subscribed yet, take a moment and hit on the subscribe button. Also, don't forget about the notification bell. That way, anytime we upload a video, you are not going to miss out. In this video, I'll be taking the time to look at what the graph and chain link are, what they do, their differences, and the similarities. And most importantly, we'll be looking at how they both come together in creating Web3, or otherwise known, the decentralized web. Data is the fuel of the internet, and this is why the ability of a company to track and use or to sell data to third parties is a big metric for the valuation of the tech company. More than 90% of all the data in the globe was generated over the course of the past two years. As many devices become smart, this number can only keep going up. And we need to build better systems to store, protect, and use them in improving every aspect of our lives. At the moment, almost all this data is collected, stored, and used by decentralized entities. To make this available to power the decentralized apps being built, a secured, tamper-proof protocol is needed to create a seamless bridge to bring the data from a centralized service to the decentralized world. This is what Chainlink does. Chainlink Decentralized Oracle Network provides reliable, temper-proof inputs and outputs for complex smart contracts on any blockchain and DLT. Blockchains are highly secure and reliable networks for value exchange, but lack the functionality to natively fetch external data or send data to off-chain systems in a manner that retains end-to-end -end temper resistance. Through the use of secure oracles, Chainlink extends the functionality to blockchains by connecting smart contracts to real-world data, events, payments, and more in a highly temper-resistant and reliable manner. Many blockchains, dApps, and off-chain networks have already started using Chainlink. It's already connecting data on Google, Hedera Hashgraph, Aave, Polkadot, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Synthetix, and many others. The simplest way I can explain Chainlink to people who probably haven't been able to grasp everything yet is one, smart contracts are immutable and verifiable contracts that automatically execute when conditions are met. Data is needed to define these conditions. And also, most of these data are now on centralized service. So finally, what Chainlink does is it connects the data needed to execute the smart contracts in a reliable, temper-proof way. The Link token is an Ethereum-based token. Requesting contract holders to use Link to pay Chainlink node operators for their work is one of the use cases for the Link token. It's a utility token. And the other use cases are Chainlink node operators also use Link to stake in the network. And also the Chainlink reputation contract considers the size of a node when it's making a decision on which node it has to favor. Now, let's look at the graph. All right. The graph was introduced in July 2018. The vision was to build a decentralized indexing protocol for Web3 to enable internet applications that are entirely powered by public infrastructure. The graph network is a core infrastructure for Web3, a necessary component for delivering decentralized applications with consumer-grade performance. The graph network decentralizes the API and query layer of the internet application stack. For the first time, it will be possible to efficiently query blockchain data without relying on any centralized service provider. So this is how Web3 has taken a step towards and is a very big and right step moving forward. We have indexes, curators, and delegators. I've already made a video about the graph where I went deeply into all of these, but briefly, I'll go through them. Again, node operators that compete to provide the best service at the lowest price 
are the indexes. Then we have curators. They are individuals who organize data and signal which subgraphs are useful and accurate. Then we have delegators, individuals who delegate stake to indexes to, to, indexes to contribute to securing the network without running a node themselves. The graph token is known as GRT. It is also built on Ethereum and it is also a utility token. The token is already trading on all top exchanges, including Binance and Coinbase. The token is a utility token built on Ethereum, like I said before. It is used on the network as one, indexer staking. We've already looked at indexes, what they do. Indexes need the graph token to be discoverable in the query market and to provide economic security for the work they are performing. Curator signaling. Curators deposit graph tokens in the creation market where they are awarded, where they are rewarded for the correctly predicting which subgraphs will be valuable to the network. Then lastly, we have delegation. People who cannot run nodes themselves can also delegate their token to the delegators in order to earn network fees. The team has already connected IPFS and Ethereum. Later on, developers can easily build their own plugins to connect their networks and make building of custom servers a thing of the past. A lot of DApps are already using the graph protocol. Uniswap, Decentraland, Aragon, Dowstack, Balanza, Aave, Synthetix, and many others. The team has already built a DApp a project registry called Everest. Everest is building toward a decentralized future where no privileged group has control over public data. Creation allows diverse stakeholders to agree on the contents of a shared registry and neutrality. To add a project to the registry, you must pay 10 die listing fee. The listing fee helps ensure that the list is quality. So now, guys, we know what both Chainlink and the graph are, what they do. And I think we can all come to an understanding that they have some similarities. But there are some differences also, which makes them not directly competitors, but actually complement the work of each other. So let's look at some differences and how the graph and Chainlink can also complement each other. The main difference is Chainlink is a middleware that connects data to execute smart contracts and now most data is found on centralized servers. On the other hand, the graph is making it very easy to build and deploy blockchain data to power high demanding dApps. So the graph has nothing to do with off-chain data. It does not gather, it does not integrate, and it does not connect any off-chain data at all. How do they work together? Well, the integration will allow indexed data from the graph's APIs called subgraphs to be relayed to smart contracts via Chainlink oracles. This opens up opportunities for developers to use indexed data sets to build powerful, truly decentralized applications. Synthetix is an example of a DeFi DApp that combines the best of middleware protocols using Chainlink oracles for price fees and powering the exchange UI using a subgraph. This integration is the start of an expansion in middleware protocols that seamlessly integrates, providing the necessary infrastructure to build truly serverless and decentralized applications. This is what I wanted to talk to you about. So now you know the differences between these projects and how they help each other out. So I don't think you're going around again asking how the graph is better than Chainlink or Chainlink is better than the graph. They are both essential in building the decentralized world. My name is Philip and please, once again, take a moment, subscribe if you have not and hit on the notification bell. If you like the video, please hit on the like button and also leave a comment. 
to interact with the community. Here is Investor's Vibe and see you another time.